This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. This is the final lecture on the chapter on Macaulay duration, valuation of bonds, and so on. Uh, but as I said before, um, it's really two separate bits. The previous two lectures, we were looking at bonds, loan stock, etc. Uh, and we revised how we um, get the market value of a bond. Uh, we revised how we can calculate the gross redemption yield, the um, return to investors. But then we looked at this Macaulay duration and the modified duration as a way of looking at the sensitivity, uh, the extent to which future changes in required returns will affect the market value of our bonds. Well, I said enough about all of that, I hope it made sense. But for this lecture, which won't take very long at all, forget bonds completely, we're now going to look again at project appraisal. But as you'll see, uh, the new bit of arithmetic is exactly the same approach as with our Macaulay duration. Uh, and it's another way we can um, look at the riskiness of a, bar, uh, of a project, because we have that chapter on risk and uncertainty. And our problem, of course, is when we do MPV, we're basing it on our expected cash flows. But those cash flows tend to be uncertain. Um, and as a result, there's risk. You know, the actual MPV might be higher, might be lower. Well, we can uh, here effectively is another way of looking at the riskiness, the effect of it. It's something called the project duration. And to show you what it is, how straightforward it is, given what we've previously done, look at example seven, the last example in the notes. It says Lola is considering a project which requires an initial investment of 240000 The projected cash flows discounted at Lola's cost of capital of 10% are as follows. So do appreciate these flows have already been discounted. Uh, quite likely in the exam, incidentally, this would only, it would never be a whole question, it would only be part of a question. But, uh, to make slightly more work, you could have been given the original cash flows and you do the discounting, but we spent enough time on the discounting itself before. These are the flows after having discounted at 10%. The present values, 240 now, the inflow in a year's time at 10% has a present value of 109.092. At time two, 87.274.63.110.32.784.14.902. And I repeat, these have already been discounted at the cost of capital of 10%. If you were given, or if you'd calculated the original cash flows each year, you would then have had to discount to get those values. Uh, well, of course, with any project, we've got all those. We could work out the net present value, positive, negative. But of course, they're uncertain. The cash flows would have been uncertain. We're never certain of those present values. But... You should remember from all oh, your really earliest studies on the management accounts paper. Um, the longer it takes to get the cash flows, the more uncertain you are. You know, you're going. To, they're all estimates, but your estimates of the flows in a year's time, perhaps you're going to be fairly confident of. But the further into the future you're forecasting, the more it almost becomes a guess. You know, how on earth are you going to be able to forecast accurately what's going to happen in five years' time? Or if it was a ten-year project, good heavens, I have no idea in ten years' time uh, what will have happened with inflation and everything else. So the further into the future it is, the more and more uncertain it is. 
And there was something which I'm not worried about for advanced financial management particularly, but you should have seen before. And as a basic measure on that, we can look at the payback period and say, oh, there's 240 for the discounted um, payback period. How quickly do we get back that 240? Oh, we've had 109 after a year. We've had another 87 after two years. That's a total of 196, nearly there. Oh, another 63 in three years, 196. Oh, that gives us 250. Oh, we've got our money back, sort of thing. Uh, and the shorter, the faster we get it back, the better. Now, the only problem with that, though, is it ignores any later flows. If we say we've had our money back after three years, end of story. But, you know, what happens if one gives 14,000 in five, another's going to give 140,000 in five? Effectively, we're ignoring it. And so it's perhaps a better measure. Let's work out the average time it takes to get the money back. And what we do, we add together the present values to get the total value of the project. So add those together, add the present values. This is part A of what we were doing on the Macaulay duration. 109092 plus 87274. 63110 32784 14902 the total present value 307162 so discount the flows at the cost of capital add together the present values that we got to earn and we say there's the value of this project. Okay, if you were making the decision, uh, we pay 240 to get something with a value of 307, fine. Get your MPV. But there is the value of the project. However, we don't get all of that in at once, obviously. 109 out of 307 we get after one year, 87 out of 307 we get in two years, and so on. Well, to work out an average, the quickest way, just like the Macaulay duration, multiply the present values by the time periods. We're getting 109 out of 307 in one year. 87 out of 307 in two years, etc. But multiply them and add them up. So 107092, 87274 times 2, 174548, 63110 times 3, uh, 189, 32784 times 4, 131136, and finally 14902 times 5, 74510. Add those up 107092 plus 174548. 189330131136741510 the total comes to 676616 and the final step just as with the macaulay duration which was for bonds what we call the project duration Uh, we divide B by A. So 676616 divided by 307162. 676616 divided by 307162. I get 2.20 years. And what is this? 
We know the value to us of doing this project is 307. You know, you compare that with what you'd have to pay, but the value uh, that it generates is 307,000. Uh, it takes five years to generate the entire value, but we've taken this effectively weighted average. And we've, what we've got is that it would deliver effectively half its value in 2.2 years. And from a risk point of view, the shorter the duration, the faster it's delivering its value, the less affected we are by uncertainty. If it was going to take, uh, if the duration was 20 years, if it was going to take an average of 20 years to get half our value, then I'd be a lot more worried because when you're forecasting over the duration of 20 years, uh, almost without doubt, you forecast a much more uncertain, much more just guesses. So there we are. Easy enough arithmetic. As I say, that would never be a whole question ever. It would be a part of a question. And the only way really they could give you more work is for you to discount the cash flows in the first place. But we know how to discount. I didn't want to waste time discounting here. Those flows given in the question had already been discounted. They were present values. So there we are.